Honestly, one of the most interesting things about looking into a game's concept art is seeing what was left on the cutting room floor. And since we've gotten to know all the CEOs from Frontier to Tundra, I wanted to highlight a couple things I've discovered in the game's concept art. The first thing is, instead of having three CEOs for each nation, there was originally going to be four, since in the concept art, there was a male Frontier character and a female Tundra CEO that we never actually see in the series. From what I could gather, the Frontier CEO was supposedly going to be named Sergeant Sam, but he was cut due to resembling a little too much to everyone's favorite infantry-loving redhead from Advanced Wars. The female Tundra CEO wasn't given a name as far as I could find, but if I had to guess what her rank was given, seeing as how that's what the naming scheme for this game is, I'd wager her rank was probably going to be Commissioner or something like that. Also, as an aside, I think the real reason Sam wasn't used was because given his naming rank, there was no way he could be your CEO for a mission, since you technically outrank him as you're ranked as Commander. But that's just a theory. A game- I'm not even going to try and finish that. One more thing before we start proper is with the under fire build of the game, because there are two significant things I wanted to point out. First off was the art style, being more akin to how the characters in Days of Ruin look, having a more graphic design to them. The other is the fact that originally Austin was Caucasian and not African American. Or would it be African Frontier? Hmm. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Battalion Wars Revisited. Last time, we did a somewhat okay job in Operation POW. I got a full 100% on it, even though I, my driving still has a little to improve on. But hey, we rescued our boys from the POW camp, we got some information from them, and we got them home safe behind Frontier Lines. It's time for us to get back under command of my all-time favorite Frontier CEO, Austin, and it's time for us to plan an attack. Assault and capture the Tundering Command Post at Cat Castle Potemkin. Tactical deployment of your forces will be required to penetrate the anti-armor defenses that cast a rain of fire around th this region. Good morning, Commander. I trust this day finds you fighting fit and ready for tactical combat. The scouts you rescued in your last mission have provided us with the location of one of the key Tundering Command Posts in this quadrant. Your task is to capture the Tundran HQ at Castle Potemkin, so that we can learn more about Marshal Nova's battle plans. The Tundrans have fortified the entry points to the castle grounds with bazooka veterans, making a mechanized frontal assault impossible. A Tundran prison camp lies to the east. I suggest you free the flame veteran POWs being held there and make good use of them. Capture the Tundran HQ at Castle Potemkin, Commander. This is your primary objective. Sir, yes sir. Alright boys, let's get a move on. You can bring up the map screen and review your objectives, the surrounding terrain and all unit positions. If you lose all your infantry, you will be unable to capture the castle, and this mission will end in failure. One final piece of advice, Commander. You can select the all icon in your command bar to give orders to all the units in your battalion. Alright, so as Austin explained, we can control our units, which is what we've been mostly doing throughout our past missions. I want to take a minute to go over the map for this area, because as you can see, it's pretty spread out. It's actually one of the biggest maps in the game, I would have to say, personally. And it also introduces something that I've been uh, theorizing for a bit. But to do so, and to explain more of it, we need to select our recon. Frontier Command has upgraded the light recon, Commander. As the driver, you now have access to a machine gun. So it's interesting that they just shoehorn the fact that there's a machine. You get basically get frontal attack with the recon, and they just attach a machine gun to it. That is because, from what I can theorize, this was actually supposed to be the mission that introduces the Frontier APC. APCs were a cut unit from the game, however, they actually do have a final model as well as a beta model when it, this was still under the Under Fire build. Gonna have our boys just focus on taking care of the tank while I harass uh, the rest of his troops. Or I guess the rest of her troops. Finish out the rest of these boys and free our flame bets. 
but yeah, it, it's interesting that they say that uh, you randomly just are given like uh, this use of a machine gun for the Frontier Light Recon. It also makes even less sense when it talks about a different version of the Recon, the Heavy Recon, but we won't be getting into that until a little bit later into the game. And it really does theorize that this was supposed to be the level that was supposed to introduce the APC. Now, we got a couple of other things we can do around here. While we freed ourselves our flame vets, we still got a, another set of POWs up here, which is another Frontier tank and its crew captured. So we're going to head over here, we're going to take care of the garrison over here, and we're basically going to hit the base from behind. Because, as you can see, they have a heavy tank positioned right there, so if we can catch that thing off guard, we'll be golden. Battalion will follow suit pretty well. They actually do have some pretty good pathfinding for this level. So we can use our recon to just basically harass the tundra positions and maybe, just maybe, free those POWs ourselves if our battalion can make it back to us in time. Well, they're actually making some pretty good time and I'm getting caught up and probably gonna get the recon crew killed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, this is why I hate recon controls! They drive like I do in real life. Honestly speaking, the the forward machine gun for the light recon doesn't feel like it packs much of a punch compared to the tail gunner. What are we waiting for? Well, we're waiting for our tank to show up so we can go rescue our POWs, of course. Ah, nice of you boys to finally show up. Alright, everybody stay behind. I'll destroy that. Yep, there we go. Fresh Jerry Con for our recon boys so they can heal on up. And the reason I want to go at this alone is because up here are a trio of Tundra Flame Vets. Flame Vets do little to no damage to vehicles, so uh, if we went up here with Recon or with our tank, we, well, we'd be pretty safe. It is kind of funny because the Recon drivers are completely exposed, yet they suffer little to no damage from the Flame Vets. Good job. You liberated the Frontier Light Tank. Your battalion's combat effectiveness is now significantly improved. You would think that Tundra would maybe position Bazooka Vets up here instead of playing Vets to protect the tank crew. Just in the off chance that they do get themselves free. Alright, we'll have our tank go down there to help out taking care of the MG Ness. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, we're good. We're golden. And for the time being, I want to take command of our Flame Vet. Huh, Austin's not giving me the dossier for the Flame Vets. That's weird. Alright, but I might as well go over what the Flame Vets are like. Uh, they're very good anti-infantry units. They can basically hose down any infantry unit and basically have them uh, reduce the crispy charred bits in a matter of seconds. They're good for other vet units, they're good for grunts, and they are good for out maneuvering any bazooka vet shots. So what you want to do is you kind of just want to like flambe them. You don't want to like uh, completely hose them down. Guys, seriously? You need to have a slow burn to cook up your tundra properly. Another interesting thing about the flame vets is they, while they have like these like luchador like flame uh, retardant masks, they are actually fully modeled underneath the masks. I kind of like, I kind of dig the design for them. It's like really unique. But I, uh, uh, yeah, they're completely modeled underneath. I believe all the vets just share the, share the same face, but they didn't have to model the face. They could have just kept it blank. But it's cool that there's like that little bit of detail underneath them. A funny thing about this is I honestly think that the the Frontier Vets kind of resemble Chris Redfield a little too much. Alright, come on boys. Yeah, we're already losing our Flame Vets pretty fast. I'm about ready to lose my Bazooka Vet here. Oh wait, and I'm dead. Alright, there's an MGNS right there. Oh, we are doing pretty bad. Alright. 
wasn't the best, but at least a good portion of the battalion survived the attack. Yep, and Bazooka Vets decide to attack us from behind. Like hell they are, boys, get that flag up. One of my favorite things is just the fact that the Tundrine Teacup just nopes right out of there if you manage to capture the base before they are able to land and drop off the troops. Castle Potemkin has been overrun. Marshal Nova will be furious. She's just dangling up there and be like, well, I'm up here. They can't hurt me if I'm up here. Maybe if I don't move, they won't see me. That honestly should not be 100% in technique with all those troops we lost at taking the castle. Power, I can say yes, because we did leave a good number of Tundrans alive, but still, the fact that we got 100% in technique is ridiculous. Oh well. 91%? Still in A rank, so I'll still take it. S surprised that power is the thing that almost completely screwed us out of getting an A rank. New unit, the Flame Vet. Armed with uh, thermometer high pressured incendiary projectors, the role is short range anti infantry and anti light recon. Nothing strikes fear into an opponent more than the sight of a flame veteran aiming at its close combat range. Amongst tightly packed infantry, flame vets are devastating, but against armored vehicles, they do little more than scorch the paint. Alright folks, if you thought the battle for Castle Potemkin was tough, oh boy. Just wait, as next time on Battalion Wars, we take on the Titans of Tundra. See you guys next time. Later.